Welcome to the Emerging Voice Broadcast, bringing you a fresh word that will change your life and impact your city. Tonight's host, Pastor Brandon Bailey, Senior Pastor of Tellius Ministry. And now, the Emerging Voice. Good evening, listeners. Welcome to the Emerging Voice. This is your host, Pastor Brandon Bailey. I'm joined by the regulars. I'm going to ask them to just give you a shout. Good evening, listeners. This is Pastor Leon James here from Royal Kingdom Ministries. Good evening, listeners. Pastor Marco Jacobs, Al Bethel Fellowship. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, well, this week we are discussing the dynamics of prophetic ministry. And uh, I think prophetic ministry has been in the spotlight again for the past couple of years. Uh, I mean, you've been seeing an emergence of prophets in the church. And the question that's been coming through from the body of believers has been, is prophetic ministry still relevant today? Do we need prophets? Uh, is there a need for prophets? And, and these are just some of the questions that's been in circulation in the body of Christ that we would seek to answer over the course of this week mm. uh, when yeah. we deal with the subject of prophecy. But, right. but let's start off, guys. Do you think prophetic ministry is still relevant today? Pastor Brandon, I'm just going to quote Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 12. The Bible says, And he gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors, and some teachers for the perfecting of the saints and for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now that scripture in itself tells us that there are certain giftings, certain offices that's been given to the body of Christ for a specific purpose. Mm. And one of those gifts and one of those offices rather is that of the prophetic. Now we believe in pastors, we believe in evangelists, we believe in teachers. It's so strange that in the body of Christ, the minute we talk about prophecy and prophets, we mm. sort of have something coming up to say, well, this is something that was only meant for the Old Testament. I think part of the reason for that is that the prophetic is almost mystified in the minds of people. It's right. this mystical thing. And there's always, when we speak about the prophetic, there's always these things about, no, you need to be careful, well, you know, these prophets yeah. because of all the prophetic words. And, you know, there's a lot of skepticism in, in the body of Christ. And what we need to see emerging is an authentic prophetic voice yes. that comes to the body yeah. of Christ. And when we come back to the scripture that Pastor Leon mentioned, it, 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 it ends off with saying for the perfecting of the saints. And this is my argument. If we say that prophets are no longer needed in the body of Christ, then we are also saying that the saints have been perfected. Mm. And my understanding is that we are towards a journey of completion. Right. That's an ongoing process. Mm. So at what stage do we decide the saints has been perfected? Mm. We don't need an apostle. We don't need a teacher. We don't need a prophet. We'll, mm. we'll never get there, Pastor Brandon. That's a fact. Uh, and, you know, dare I really say that we've got to make sure also, and I think one of the reasons also is that we, we sort of place emphasis on a certain office. Mm, you yeah. see, so a lot of people place an emphasis and say, no, this is the uh, the emerging of pastors or it's the emerging of apostles or it's the emerging of teachers. Whereas, in fact, the Bible is quite clear. We need all these fivefold ministering gifts, ministering offices to perfect the saints. And prophecy shouldn't also be isolated from it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as the body of Christ, if we're going to get into a state of perfection, it's when we make use of all five of these offices in the body of Christ. Yeah. And this is what I think, Pastor Leon, many times when we lack understanding of something, we generally become fearful of it and mm. we just completely ignore it. And, and this is what has happened to apostolic ministry and perhaps also prophetic ministry is that because the church is not adequately equipped in understanding the roles and the functions of these offices, we ignore it and we, we have business as usual without yes. it. And so I'm saying if the church was able to come to this level in the absence of the foundational ministries, mm. which is apostles and prophets, how much more effective will the church be when they are in the body of Christ? Yeah. But now let's come back to Pastor Marco's point. Pastor Marco said there's always this mystery that mm. surrounds mm. prophetic ministry. Uh, Pastor Marco, what do you think has been some of the major contributing factors that made people perceive this as a mystery? I think firstly, it's this whole concept of hearing God because it's this um, almost foreign concept to, to some. And where that has become magnified is where people have said they've heard God, but they didn't. And they started prophesying things, saying things, predicting things, um, speaking over people's lives. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's also the issue of your word is locked up in the mouth of the prophet, etc. You know, comments like that, that has really, it has brought the prophetic to a point where there's been a lot of discrediting of it. Mm -hmm. But I think that with the introduction of most um, ministries into the body of Christ, or rather the reintroduction, 
introduction of truth or offices, there's always an imbalance that comes right. with it. But what we need to ensure is that we bring the balance back. I also think uh, part of the problem, Pastor Marco, is that people call themselves prophets, but in effect... They were not prophets. And also you could see it by the kind of things that they did. For example, you know, there was a certain stage where people said that they were prophets and all they did was stand up in church and expose people's sin, for example. Oh, yeah. And then they say, no, the Lord has shown me that you're sleeping with this one or you doing that kind of a sin. And that brought some, somewhat a, you know, an imbalance to what the real meaning and purpose of the prophetic ministry yeah. was all about. Meaning now that people thought that, you know, if you are a prophet, the only reason that God will give you that gift is so that you can expose people's sin. And people mm. became, you know, closed up to that as a as a ministering gift for the perfecting of the saints. Very good point, Pastor Leon. Listeners, we're going to go into a short ad break. And when we come back, we're going to pick up on, on this. Telios is a vibrant kingdom community where the worship is unique and the word taught in simplicity. Join us every Sunday at 11 a.m. in Crown Gardens, Johannesburg, on the corner of Shannon and Tilray Road, with Pastor Brandon and Marilyn Bailey. For more information, dial 078-161-3034 or email info at telios.org.za. We are Telios, creating a kingdom culture. Hey everybody, I'm Pastor Leon James and together with my wife, Pastor Sherry Ann, would like to invite you to Royal Kingdom Ministries. We're a vibrant church located at Xavier Junction, number 5 Renter Street, Ormondi. Join Royal Kingdom Ministries every Sunday at 9am for authentic worship and a word that will change your life. You can find us on Facebook or contact us on 079-775-4293. Royal Kingdom Ministries, where you are royalty. Al Bethel Fellowship, discipling nations, equipping the saints, facilitating destiny, and releasing ministers. Senior pastors Marco and Cindy Jacobs invite you to a worship experience every Sunday morning, 9.30. Find us in Springfield, number 41, Marlboro Road. Join us for an inspiring, uplifting word. Our website, albethelfellowship.co.za. Hi, I'm Pastor Paul Gonzalez, and together with my wife, Pastor Leanne, we'd like to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for our exciting Sunday morning services at 9 a.m. at the Rock Church, Johannesburg. Dynamic praise, intimate worship, and an in-season life-changing word awaits you. We're at Mondial Recreation Center just off Columbine Street, or call us on 11 024 we also on Facebook, Rock Church, Johannesburg, Church for the City, a word for the nation. Welcome back, listeners. This is the Emerging Voice with your host, Pastor Brandon. Uh, we are discussing the dynamics of prophetic ministry. Mm. And so Pastor Leon ended off in the first half with something very interesting. He says there's this misconception that prophets are only raised up in the body of Christ to expose people's sin and sort of to embarrass people. And so that all speaks into the dynamics of protocol, Pastor Leon. Yes. Because yes. when I track prophetic ministry back to the Old Testament, uh, I it, we track it back to what we call a school of the prophets. Mm. I mean, you had a school at Rama, the school at Bethel, yeah. the school right. at Jerusalem. And, and you can read up these scriptures, Ezra 5, verse 1 to 2, 2 Kings 2, verse 3, 2 Kings 12 to 15. Uh, you can read up on it. There was different schools of prophets. And this is what I believe. I believe that prophecy is a grace. Yeah. But I believe that the prophetic schools was to teach the prophet the disciplines of the office. Yes. Because many times men can walk in a grace but not be disciplined in that grace. I like to phrase it the following way. I say, what good is it being on fire for God but not having an understanding of the fire? Yeah, right. maybe I could make it a bit practical there. You know the, the issue of people who, who shout out from the back of the church, da, 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 the Lord has just said something and they begin to, mm, mm, mm. that lacks protocol. There has to be a situation where there is a submission of the word to the pastor, the senior leader of the house, and the pastor will then decide whether the word gets released. or not. Now, now the question is, well, I heard God. You know, and if yeah. I heard God, then obviously I need to speak. But the truth is that the pastor is responsible for every word that is spoken Absolutely. to that congregation. And the other thing is God is a God of order. He's not That's a God it. of confusion. Yeah. Now, if you just come into a church, first of all, I mean, the Bible says that the spirit of the prophet is subject 
yeah. to the prophet. Meaning now that even if you, you are a prophet and you've got a mm. spirit of prophecy in you, that spirit needs to be subjected to something. Submission. And I think it is very important that, mm. you know, not anybody who comes into church to share a word uh, must just be allowed to do so because there is a certain rank and order in the yes. church. And in that local church that the pastor has the rank and the order, for example, and the prophet needs to submit that word through to the pastor. Yeah. Mm. The scripture you're using is First Corinthians fourteen thirty two that the spirit of the prophet is subject yep. to the prophet, and and this is my understanding. If a prophet comes in and he has a word for us, that word will not be something new. It will bear witness in the spirit of the pastor, mm. and this is why you run there to the pastor and he'll make sense of it. And this is the issue why the Bible says the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet is because prophets can mm. become wild, and so it is in, important for us to establish schools of ministry where we don't teach you how to prophesy, but where we teach you how to be disciplined. In the gift of prophecy, Pastor Leo. Very important, Pastor Brandon. And, and you know, that, that that just comes back to the reason why there was a school. A school is there to instruct. A school yeah. is there to give you direction. And the yeah. problem is, is that we've got so many people who call themselves prophets, but they've never been subjected to teaching. Yeah. Mm. Can I come back to the point of ranking? Because the Bible says God has said first the apostle, second the prophet. Mm. So there is this idea that the prophet is senior to the pastor. And if the prophet mm. comes into the local church, he outranks the pastor and he can say mm. whatever he he likes because he's a prophet but the correct order is that the set man of the house where there's a pastor where there's a teacher right. where there's an evangelist he holds the rank in his yes. own house and maybe if i could bring it back to your own house you know i could be a general in the army but if i come into pastor leon's house i'm mm. in submission to his rules yeah. of his house yeah and so also to add to that the prophet must then distinguish uh, what is a prophecy for the house and what is a Here word for the individual? Yeah. It goes back to the point Pastor Leon raised earlier. Many times we say things publicly that was meant for individual oh. consumption. Yes. And that Crucial. is embarrassing and it also hurts people mm. in the process. And so it's important for a prophet to understand, you know, what is for everybody and what is for me personally. Right. So again, it comes down to what we've been addressing here, the dynamics of protocol within the house. Mm. And I want to encourage our listeners out there, Pastor Brandon, to be very careful who they believe to be prophets. You know, first make sure that this person has got some credibility, yeah. not only in what he says, but also where he comes from. Yeah. yeah. You know, check the man out. Who's he, sub who's he submitting to? Yeah. You can't just come and speak and prophesy over somebody's life, but you're not submitting anywhere. And those are important things that we need to look at. Well, this is so interesting, uh, the dynamics of prophetic ministry. We're going to touch on this for the duration of this week. So please listen to the Emerging Voice. Thank you so much and good night. We trust that you've enjoyed this broadcast. Join us tomorrow at the same time with your program host, Pastor Leon James from Royal Kingdom Ministries, the Emerging Voice. Listeners, if you have any questions or any comments for the show and you would like to discuss it, please feel free to email us at emerging2013 at gmail.com.